Hi, my name is Chaz Kangas. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, currently residing in Harlem, New York, and today I am in lovely Union Square for the Be Shine. You know, it's funny talking about first exposures to hip hop because as far back as I can actually remember uh, watching Yo MTV raps at a really young single digit age just because I thought Ed Lover and Dr. Gray were cool. And I remember the first video that really connected with me in terms of this is something I really want to see more of was the Busta Rhymes Woo Ha Got You All in Check video. I remember just, you know, you have MTV on as a kid and you see different videos and I don't know if like watching it now or in the YouTube era and seeing it on a computer when you're deliberately seeking it out does it justice. But initially when you see like videos of, you know, dudes at the club or, you know, the streets and then in the midst of all this you see this guy in like big shiny jackets and fisheye Hype Williams camera lenses just completely animated and uh, the shots of him in the foreground and uh, in the back and just all over. It, nothing else looked like that on TV at the time, and I didn't know you could put things like that on television. So just the sheer animated aspect of that made me really seek out the characters in rap. Because, you know, when you're at that age, you get into, you know, comic books or wrestling and, like, in these, like, larger-than-life people. And in, in hip-hop, it's like, oh, these are, like, actually real people making music who you can, like, follow their careers and hear the art they're making. And I realized how much, when you're really young, hip-hop was marketed to our generation. And in terms of like, you know, hip-hop being the counterculture of the 80s and in, but from my perspective being like the really first, like the second wave of those sort of kids, you know, people born in like the mid-80s. And with the, uh, people bemoan the old Fruity Pebbles, uh, my name is Barney Rubble and I'm here to say that I like Fruity Pebbles in a major way. Like that sort of direct marketing to kids in hip-hop, but even beyond that, just seeing how many uh, bumpers for animated shows, how many toy commercials, how many cereal commercials, all just perpetually had rap music involved and uh, even at, at a point when it was in like the Muppet shows with and so I guess realizing how much hip-hop had just been perpetually just you know t even tangentially involved in all of my interests uh, it kind of shaped like without like almost subconsciously things that I was directly supposed to like and that I directly do like. Well being in Minneapolis at a time and really seeing the evolution of uh, the, the Twin Cities scene at the age that I was there was a really wonderful experience. Uh, first and foremost because the beauty of, geographically speaking, of Minnesota, uh, I've always viewed rap as a really regional genre. You know, obviously East Coast artists don't sound like West Coast artists, and then when you get into like, you know, even the smaller, like, minutia of it, uh, artists from Houston, Texas don't sound like artists from Memphis, Tennessee. Like, so, there's such a family tree to so many different sounds. And because of the positioning of Minnesota, like, right at the top of map like everything would just sort of trickle up and there were so many used CD stores where eventually I'd just be able to acquire so much music from all over and really be able to like trace that and find like the map of hip-hop. Uh, being at like age 12, 13 when Idea was really winning the blaze battle and being able to see that like uh, as a youth from HBO and realizing here's someone you know roughly my age doing something on this sort of level uh, nationwide and getting respect was an amazing thing to see and when you see in record stores, you know, how often, uh, you know, Slug and Atmosphere um, and just other, like, Minneapolis dudes are popping up on so many other artists, you know, uh, records. And just seeing just really that uh, DIY, you know, do-it-yourself, built up uh, hip-hop empires that were starting, it was a really cool thing to, to see and to be around. And, uh, and so right at the time when Minneapolis was uh, really, like, getting to, you know, a fever pitch and people were really checking for it, I moved to New York, because why should life make sense? I had the tremendous fortune to have parents who always encouraged me in all of my endeavors. Um, be it in, in film, because I went to school for cinema studies at NYU out here. Uh, be it in hip-hop, be it in whatever, just you know, as long as I wasn't uh, directly hurting myself or others, uh, they really encouraged my involvement in the arts. So in, in terms of hip-hop, because real speaking, it's, it's a youth culture, so, uh, and they sort of got that and they got that it was like gonna be a big interest for me and um, with, you know it's it's different things where you know when, when you can tell like the sort of exact moments when like they realize what you're doing and, and what it means to you um, I grew up with a dad who always had a really quick wit and a really uh, sharp smart things to say in sort of situations and I think it was really when um, right around the time that YouTube started and they got really popular in like 2005 2006 
when like freestyle battles I was in with me like being able to turn phrases and like respond uh, and the performance aspect of it and like that I think was something that he really uh, enjoyed me doing and could appreciate and for my mom it was when I was uh, uh, participating in the New York subway series and when uh, NPR did a story on it and I was one of the people they interviewed one of the first people they, they spotlighted uh, in that feature and that was broadcast uh, you know nationwide so uh, her, uh, her her co-workers uh, uh, were walking up to her and saying, "Hey, I heard your son on NPR." And so she turned it on, and you know, it, it's it's about making parents proud, and you know, not not a lot of rappers can can say that. And I feel really blessed and fortunate to uh, have the upbringing that I did. What still keeps me inspired in coming back for more in hip hop is the unpredictable elements in hip hop, with so many things you can pull from and so many styles, and you know. Regionally, like I mentioned before, it's so different all over the country and all over the world, really, that there, it hasn't become homogenized where, you know, this artist from here sounds exactly like this artist from here. Everyone's doing different things. Um, personally, I think the worst year for hip hop that I've been alive for was like between like 2008, 2009, when rappers weren't interested in the actual act of rapping. Rhyming is fairly restricted, and on one hand, there's only so much you can do when you're making a rap song or freestyling. To make sure that it rhymes, but on the other hand, like the fact that you have that restriction, what you can do within that can lead to so many great, cool things. I think it's an Igor Stravinsky quote that I like a lot, where and I'm paraphrasing here, but it's when walls are put up that true creativity thrives. And I think at, in hip hop, in the format, and what you can do, be it MCing or even in the realms of like DJing, CD breakdance, that's when someone comes and does something totally different, totally. Uh, inspiring and galvanizing within that medium is what constantly inspires me. I think in terms of hip-hop, the biggest challenge I've been able to overcome is looking like this. Uh, but more than that, like when I first came to New York, um, uh, or even just like when I first started like going to like rap events in Minnesota, I had uh, obscenely long hair, I had glasses, I had braces, I had like basically a lot of ammo for anybody who was going to battle me. And I feel having that and the fact that I would like, I'd go to like rap shows with no one, I'd go to battles with no one, uh, because along with like, you know, making friends there, like I like the challenge of like winning over a crowd and being able to really overcome that. And I feel like that even, you know, years later in non-battle related um, uh, endeavors added a certain air of legitimacy to what I did and just, and the sheer fun of it as well. I just hope my legacy just makes people happy. like. Um, going out and, you know, performing on stage, like, nothing beats that moment of, you know, just giving someone for, you know, either like, for like a three minute song or like a 20 minute set, or even if it's someone like listening to your music or seeing something, knowing that you could put someone in this realm or in this world you create for that, that certain isolated amount of time and either make me, you know, forget what's going on, you know, if you give them like, you know, like that, that uh, moment of alleviation or allowing them to um, just really, you know, in, enjoy something or make me maybe make them think differently about something or really give them your perspective. Uh, my favorite artists who's like art that I still really treasure in any medium are the ones who uh, really gave me like a different view of things and not even talking like politically speaking but just in terms of like giving a perspective or giving a way to say things that I wouldn't otherwise have. Like that's always going to be my favorite, you know, you know, either unsettling or just really welcoming like thing that I, I check for in anything and if you know if you can make just you know like that one person happy and they tell someone or just in general like that to me is what you know all really you can hope to do uh, with making art and having a good time too because uh, rapping is really fun and I think people lose lose sight of that in terms of even just like writing about rap or however they're approaching it like have a good time like it's really cool we're alive at an awesome time where we have like 40 years of great music and so many really cool people doing really different things now and because of the internet you have access to all of it it's awesome just check it out it's really cool I uh, got an EP hopefully out soon I am just finished it with our producer Good Goose yesterday. I don't want to give an exact date for it because under the laws of hip hop, if you give a release date for an album, it's going to be pushed back by about four or five months. But you can be excited for it. Got some really cool guest features on it. And it, it sounds, uh, I'm really, it sounds really good. I really enjoy it.
uh, along with that new music coming out. Uh, I active writing as well. Uh, you can read my writing in uh, The Village Voice, uh, The LA Weekly, City Pages, The OC Weekly, New York Times, uh, Spectrum Culture. I Places like that I write about things and I feel, you know, if, I'm going to be talking about hip-hop all day anyway. If I can get a place to, you know, to put up what I'm writing about, cool. And so I'm available to have stuff all there. I'm also uh, co-writing the autobiography for Ari the Rugged Man, and which is really going to be an awesome, awesome read. And uh, yeah, I, I'm on Twitter, at Chaz Raps. I'm on Facebook.com slash Chaz Raps. I'm on Tumblr, Tumblr dot Chaz Raps. Because I'm Chaz and Chaz Raps, C-H-A-Z-R-A-P-S. And I, everything that I write about, I'm going to be talking about a lot because I'm an only child. There was a spot in New York that I really owe my hip hop career to called Sin Sin. That was, uh, that had an event called Freestyle Monday that was hosted by uh, Ill Spoken and Mariella. They let me go there when I was uh, underage, uh, along with the agreement that while there, I don't try to drink. And I stayed good to my word because I grew up on Van Damme movies and honor's important. But, uh, so basically, I would perform there every week, and that's really how I was able to, you know, build a following and, you know, sharpen my skill. Uh, during one of the final nights there, I was hanging out with, uh, with Maria Issa, who she's come to New York a, a handful of times and had performed there a few times. And she shared with me a story about how, because her and I have battled twice there, and when she was in Minnesota, she was having a conversation with uh, Idea, who I've always considered a big influence and just, uh, just an incredible performer. I've always uh, really enjoyed his work. And while talking to him, because she mentioned, you know, she wanted, you know, you know, music and also the whole battling thing, you know, she should be involved in all of it. And Idea told her, yeah, if you enjoy doing it, no one can take that away from you. And that's the whole point. You know, you should like what you do if you have fun doing it, and just do everything you can do that's fun. And uh, she shared that with me, and that's just, since then, just been my approach uh, to everything. Just say yes, and take opportunities, take chances. Good things will happen, a lot more than if you just say no. So, go for it.